Praise the Lord, beloved of the Most High God. Uh, I want to talk to you today about a little sermonette, if you will, that I'm going to call. It's not, I got you till. It's, I got you, period. You know, because there are so many people, Lordship Salvationists, Works Salvationists, all the false religions that are trusting in works and work salvationists, lordship salvationists are in the same category. This is why Jesus stresses over and over in the scripture that it is important for you to know him when he tells people, I don't know you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. When he says, I never knew you. You know, when he says, I tell you the truth. In the, in the case of the parable of the ten virgins, where five were wise and five were foolish, he says to the five foolish, I don't know you. But that's different, the people who are trusting in works, from those who are trusting in knowing Jesus, having been born again, or as the scripture says, when it says born again, they're meaning born from above. That we have newness of life because of our faith in Christ. And, you know, so many people believe that it's I got you till. That Jesus is saying, I got you till you mess up one time too many. Till you sin one time too many. Till you turn your back on me. Or until you sin that great sin that is an imaginable, unpardonable sin. And just for clarification, the unpardonable sin today, the only way that a person can commit the unpardonable sin, since God is not manifested in the flesh present day, you can't commit blasphemy of the Holy Spirit the way that you could because the Holy Spirit dwelled in him bodily. God was manifested in the flesh. So they were mocking the living God even though his flesh was his veil. The blasphemy of the Holy Spirit today is God having witness to people throughout their life and they die in their sin, having rejected the Lord Jesus Christ. Dying in that state is the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, is the unpardonable sin. That's why a person can't go to hell and cry out to God, okay, I believe you now. It's too late. You rejected Jesus during the time that you had to receive him, which is here on this planet, here in this life, as you draw breath. And tomorrow is not promised to any man. We don't know the day nor the hour when we might meet an untimely death. Through, I mean, just the simplest thing, a slip and fall in the bathtub can take you out of here. You know? So you need to make sure that you know Jesus. You know, the scripture says, and you'll hear a lot of work salvationists try to twist the scripture and take it out of context to make your election sure. Well, according to the scripture, if you let the Bible define itself, the only way that one could make their election sure is to make sure they know Jesus. So let a man examine himself, examine your heart, examine your faith. Make sure your belief is in Christ alone, plus nothing else. That's how you make your election sure. It's not going back whipping out your list of all the good deeds you've done and going, okay, whew, I'm safe. No, it don't work like that. It don't work like that. We are justified by faith. So to make your election sure means check your faith. Is it in Christ alone? It's not saying go check your works. But I was meditating on this whole concept of God, Jesus saying to us, it's not I got you till, it's I got you period. No probation here. I don't serve a Jesus that offers probation. I serve a Jesus that offered salvation. In Psalms 91, it says, with long life, 
will I satisfy you and then show you my salvation. God speaking. It's not your salvation. It's not my salvation. In other words, garnered from me. It's not garnered from you. It's from his hand. He's the one that created this glorious, amazing, wondrous, indescribable salvation. How dare anyone say that you could lose it as though God can be tarnished, as though God can be blemished, as though God can fall short. You know, we'll trust all state to be the good hands people, but we won't trust God not to drop us. But Jesus settled that when he said in the scripture, when he was here on this earth, that no man could pluck you from his hand. That means you, even in your own rebellion, cannot remove yourself from God's hand. And isn't that a wondrous thing? That even when we fall into rebellion as believers, you know, rebellion is simply just telling God no. People always act like it's going back out into the world, you know, like the prodigal son. And getting in the muck and miring out there with the pig slop. Well, it's that, but that's like that's like the worst end of it. That's the extreme. But there's also those who just say, no, God. The Bible says it is the fool that says in their heart. And right there, the there is is added. It means that too. But it also means exactly what it says without the there is there. It is the fool that says in their heart, no, God. So there's times we're foolish. God will tell you, oh, I want you to forgive so-and-so. And, -so. and that, hurt, that person hurt you deeply. I ain't saying it ain't hard. And you don't look up at the sky like God is crazy. And well, what? Forgive them. And he wants you to forgive them. And they may have hurt you desperately. And that's going to take you a while to work on. I've been through that. You know, I mean, God, I know you, God, and you know, uh, I hear you, but uh, I ain't feeling you right now, God. <laughs> I know don't none of y'all ever go through that, right? Come on now, let's be real. Let's keep it real. There are times that you don't want to hear what God has to say. And you were like, you know, Holy Spirit, could you just give me a minute <laughs> to work on this? Because uh, I ain't ready to forgive so-and-so. That's a bit, excuse me, that's a bitter pill to swallow. But he reminds us, you got to show them the same grace I've shown you. You didn't deserve my forgiveness. You know, what a lot of these works folk, they really, they think more highly of themselves than they ought to think. And they really act like they deserve, because of their works, they deserve God's salvation. No, you don't. You're in the same boat as all the rest of us miserable, detestable sinners. Wretched sinners who, apart from the living God, there would be nothing redeemable in us. And is not apart from the living God. But because of Jesus... All of these things, these wondrous things about the very Lord we serve are imputed to us. Oh, what a wondrous and glorious thing. No, it is not I got you, Till. It's I got you, period. Jesus is not going to drop us. In another passage of scripture, he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you always, even until the end of time or the end of the age, if you prefer. The end of the world. He's there, right there, ever present help, the Bible says, in time of trouble. But if you listen to these idiots that tell you you can lose your salvation, that trouble you, 
that vex us with this poison that is another gospel which is not another. They will render you ineffectual because what you will do is begin to concentrate on sin and have consciousness of sin. And the Bible does not tell us to focus on sin, people. The Bible tells us, dearly beloved of the Most High God, to focus on Jesus. He is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's to whom we look. We look to Jesus. You know, I'm reminded of the scripture, just a few here to give you an idea about how the Bible speaks of eternal life. It doesn't say life until you sin one time too many. Find me the scripture. I would love to see it. It ain't there. If you remember in Matthew chapter 19 when the rich young ruler came to Jesus. Very famous story. And he says, uh, one came to him and said, Good master, what things shall I do that I may have eternal life? Now notice, if Jesus knows that there is not eternal life, right here he'd have to correct this man. And he'd have to say to him, that's in verse 16 of, of Matthew chapter 19. He'd have to say, wait a minute, hold up. Stop right there. I don't offer eternal life. I offer life until you sin one time too many. Now, wouldn't he have to do that, y'all? Come on, let's be real. If Jesus was not offering eternal, forever life, wouldn't he have to say, hold up? I got to correct you. Because over and over again, Jesus will say, truly, truly, verily, verily, I say unto you. In other words, he said, I'm telling you the truth. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. So Jesus would have to stop this young man and say, I'm sorry. There is an eternal life. It's only life until you sin one time too many. But he doesn't do that. We see that mirrored in Mark's gospel, the 10th chapter, the 17th verse, as the second witness of this account. Jesus speaks, if you drop down in Mark chapter 10, verse 30, he speaks about everyone that, you know, that is a disciple that gives up different things for him. Now, we're talking about disciple in this passage, not salvation. Specifically, as though that person is earning salvation and the lordship salvation, salvationist and work salvationist always trample all over the scripture. But at the end of it, he says, and then the world to come, eternal life, not life until you sin one time too many. Luke 10, verse 25. There was a lawyer that came to him. And tempted him saying, Master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? Again, Jesus doesn't correct them on calling it eternal life. Luke 18, 18, same thing. Good master, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? John 3, 15. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have eternal life. John 5 39 search the scriptures for in them you think you shall have eternal life and there and they are <laughs> I'm butchering that and they are they which testify of me now he's saying even in the scriptures you believe that there is eternal life not life till you sin one time too many John 6, 54, Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. Verse 68, Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. John 10, 28, I give unto them eternal life, 
and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. I mentioned this one earlier. Now this one's a very good one to learn, especially when the devil is coming to you trying to tell you that because you just sinned, you gonna lose your salvation. Or maybe you just lost it. Or see you ain't really quote unquote saved. John 10 28. Memorize it. I recommend it highly. And I shall give unto them eternal life. And they shall never perish. Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Now, right there is what I was saying. The Bible says, Jesus is speaking here, and he says, Neither shall any man. That means no man. Okay, if it means no man, that means you in your own rebellion cannot remove yourself from God's hand. He is never failing. He is never changing. He is faithful that promise. It is not about us. It is his salvation. He says, I will give unto them eternal life. Not life until you sin one time too many. Not life until. It's not I got you till. It's I got you period. We need to get that down deep in our hearts, beloved of the Most High God. There are so many doctrines floating within the church now that are steeped in this trash about works. Don't believe it. It is a lie from the pit of hell. It is a doctrine of devils. It is through faith in Christ alone that we are justified, period. Don't let them do it to you. Don't let them trouble you with that false heretical doctrine. It is not because of us. We are not saved in any way, shape, form, or fashion by our works. We are not justified in any way, shape, form, or fashion by our works. We are justified by faith, the scripture says, in Christ alone, plus nothing else. And what they want to do, what the devil wants to do, is make you fearful. But the Bible says God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. The Bible says the righteous are as bold as a lion. How are you going to be bold as a lion if you keep fearing hell every other minute because of a sin? No, you need to be confident that your position in Jesus is secure because of your faith in him. That is what the scripture says all throughout. You go back and you look at the Old Testament saints. Some of them live treacherous lives. Let's just take a look at Father Abraham, the father of faith as everyone calls him. When he went and he did that thing where he told Sarah to lie, to, uh, uh, it was a king or a ruler that they were dealing with and he was afraid that this man would take her because she was so beautiful take her to wife and kill him so he said tell him that I'm your brother which was a half truth because she was his half sister and God kept him even in the lie y'all you know that scripture I was meditating on it one day where it says, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. And the Holy Spirit stopped me one day and made me focus on in all thy ways. He didn't say in all my ways. In other words, speaking of his ways. He's speaking and he says in all thy ways. So, he's going to keep us. And I, I was blown away when I really let that sink in. Do you know how corrupt most of our ways are? Do you know how fallen we really are? Well, let me remind you what the scripture says about us. That our ways are not his ways and our thoughts are not his thoughts. That's what the scripture says. So, we have to remember 
that even when we try to do our best to be godly and to be holy, we fall short because we are nothing like the living God except when we do our best to keep his commandments and even then we fail short. It is in the falling short that the Bible calls this sin. That's what sin is. Missing the mark. But the Bible reminds us to press on to the mark of the high calling of Christ. You see, he keeps us even in our ways. Just like he did Abraham. Abraham lied and God blessed him anyway. Go read the story for yourself. God blessed him anyway. Despite the fact that he lied. And I'm going to be truthful with you. The, 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 the ruler that he was dealing with seemed more honorable at that time than Abraham. Go read it. Yet, God blessed him, even though he lied. How many times, as a believer, how many times as a believer do you recall you messed up. I mean, you know, there's an old saying that a lot of us deserve to be in jail. We just didn't get caught for some of the stuff we did back in the day. Well, how many times do you know God kept you for something you did and you was wrong, as they say, wrong as rain. And yet he kept you and he got you through. And he may have even turned that thing around where you got blessed. And you sitting back with your mouth open because you know you deserve to get slammed. You see, we never get what we deserve as believers. We never get what we deserve. We deserve hell. We never get it. Because we believe on the one who took the punishment in our place. The Lord Jesus Christ. A few more scriptures. Just a few more on eternal life. But please, I recommend strongly that you learn John 10, 28. When the devil comes to you and you just sinned, and he says, see, I just saw that, because that's what Satan does, and he may use believers. He may use believers to be accusers. You put your chin up in the air and you say, yeah, what of it? I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. Now, I know there's people that's going to lose their mind over that. And say, what are you saying to sin may, you know, sin that grace may, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the condemnation of sin. The devil will try if he know he can't, he know he can't take your soul. That belongs to Jesus. You've been bought with a price, the Bible says. So what is he going to do? He's going to come to try to make you ineffectual. He's going to come to try to make you get all hemmed up about what sin you've committed. So you're not soul winning. You're not passing out tracts, you're not praying, you're not reading the word, and you get tied up in this for a period of time where he keeps you ineffectual. Don't fall into that trap. Pick up. Thank Jesus for paying for all of your sin and cleansing you and move on. Now, Acts 13:48. And when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord. And as many as were ordained to eternal life believed. Romans 2, 7. To them who by patient continuance in well-doing seek for glory and honor and immortality, eternal life. Again, the scripture is pointing out that there's no other kind of life. This is my point for these scriptures. You can go back and debate all the other details of certain scriptures later. What I'm pointing out is the only thing that God offers is eternal life. Not life until you sin one time too many. Romans 6, 23. Well, actually, let me back up. Romans 6, excuse me, Romans 5, 21. That as sin hath reigned unto death, even so my grace reign through righteousness unto eternal life by Jesus Christ our Lord. Ooh, that's a good one to learn too. Romans 6, 23. For well, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. 1 Timothy uh, 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. 
lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called and hast professed a good profession before many witnesses. Only thing God offers is eternal life. Remember I told you in Psalm 91, and that's not the only place that God talks about it being his salvation, but I'm pointing to that one particular right now where he says, long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. It belongs to him. His salvation is incapable of corruption. Who do you make God to be? He's not a fallible man. His salvation is incorruptible. You can't destroy it. You can't stop it. You can't change it. 1 Timothy 6, 19, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against time, against the time to come, that they may lay hold on eternal life. Titus 1, 2, in hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before the world began. In another passage of scripture, the Bible talks about, Behold the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. He promised eternal life. He is faithful that promise. It's not contingent upon us. Take the focus off yourself. Yes, we're sorry. Yes, we're wretched. Yes, we're miserable, detestable sinners. Yes, in our flesh dwells no good thing. As the scripture says, yet, yet, because we have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ and his substitutionary death in the payment for our sin and received the gift of pardon, we are justified by that faith. So when the devil comes to you, whether in the form of a, a human being or a, the devil himself points his crooked finger at you, you say you can't lay anything to my charge. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And I have the gift of eternal life. And the Bible says God's gifts, the gift of eternal life is a gift. And God's gifts are without repentance. That means he don't change his mind. He ain't taking it back. Titus 3, 7. I got happy here and don't remember if I read this one. So if I read this one, please bear with me. That being justified by his grace, we should be made heirs according to the hope of eternal life. 1 John 1. For the life was manifested and we have seen it and bear witness and show unto you that eternal life, which was the Father excuse me, which, which was with the Father and was manifested unto us. Eternal, not life until you sin one time too many. It is not I got you till, it's I got you, period. A little bit more, just to whip the devil's natural behind on this lie that you can lose your salvation. 1 John 2, 25. And this is the promise that he promised us even eternal life. 1 John 5, 11. And this is the record that God had given to us. Eternal life. And this life is in his son. All of you say God had no son. Uh, that scripture declares it right there. 1 John 5, 13. These things have I written unto you that you may believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Jesus, in case there's any confusion. 1 John 5, 20. And we know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding that we may know him that is true and we are in him that is true even in his son Jesus Christ this is the true God and eternal life all you Jehovah Witnesses this is the true God <laughs> Jesus and eternal life now I could go on 
and on and on with scriptures that reference the words, the phrase eternal life. We didn't even touch the ones that say everlasting life. I hope that that will give you solace, that that calms your heart and your mind. If these heretics have troubled you, that you could lose your salvation. It is not us who are faithful. I've said it before. I'll say it again. There's only one person that's going to wear the name faithful and true for all eternity. And it's not me and it's not you. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. He is faithful that promised. It's because he says to us, not I got you till. He says, I got you, period. That's the God we believe in. The God who is greater than any sin. The God who is greater than any mess up we could do. The God that is greater than our wretchedness. Swallows up sin, the Bible says. That where sin did abound, grace did much more abound. Be blessed, beloved of the Most High God. In Jesus' name, amen.